help women save lives and peacefully end abortion where you live. I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, The infant would be delivered. Uh, The infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, The infant would be resuscitated if if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. You were serious about that? Be inspired to change hearts and minds by joining over one million volunteers taking part in the global movement happening in your neighborhood. She says, pray that I can get through this abortion. And I said, oh, no, no. So she went ahead and went into the abortion clinic. And she just came out. She told me, I'm not going to get the abortion. We just had a baby saved. But we had a baby saved and never to go. Pray the Lord. This is the 40 Days for Life podcast with your host, Sean Carney. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the 40 Days for Life podcast. I'm Sean Carney, the president of 40 Days for Life and your host for this podcast, which is dedicated to helping you end abortion where you live. Happy Lent! It's here. And accompanying this Lent, praise God, is the largest spring 40 Days for Life campaign we've ever had. And and it beat last spring, which was, uh, you know, here we are, our second full year in post-Row America, and we continue to gain cities um, in the United States. Everybody is just clamoring for 40 Days for Life uh, because, as we know, now that it goes back to the states, it's about hearts and minds, and the pregnancy centers are more important than ever before. Uh, You participating in 40 Days for Life where you live is more important than ever before, and as we saw with a recent closing of an abortion facility in the South Bronx, it doesn't matter if your state is buckling down and saying we're going to have abortions at 40 weeks you can change hearts and minds anywhere so find your location at 40daysforlife.com it's on the home page sign up sign up today this podcast is coming out on mardi gras fat tuesday happy uh, mardi gras to everybody who celebrates that uh outside of new orleans where it's just a disaster i've never been i would never go but i've heard it's just uh, chaotic um So happy Mardi Gras. Sign up for 40 Days for Life. This is the perfect Lenten resolution. And um, it's one of those things. If you haven't done it already, it's all right. But if you don't do it today and you don't do it Ash Wednesday, it starts to kind of get away from you, kind of get into Lent. So if you're listening to this like a week or so after it comes out, we're a full week into Lent, go sign up go sign up because it is so important um, as we see so much chaos in, in around this issue. And I believe much of that chaos is, is frustrating as it is, is, uh, is good. So today we are going to talk about fasting, which is one of the most popular topics uh, for the podcast anyways. Um, and so we're going to take a couple of different angles. We're also going to cover five things not to fast from very excited not that you have to listen to us in any of this stuff but from what people have told us from information we've gathered since 40 days for life is built on prayer and fasting we've we've got a lot of good fasting information at 40 days for life and so we are going to share that with you including five things uh not to fast from how i would love if like beef ribs were on there that would be great but they're they're not on our five things not to fast from so Someone I will not be fasting from is my co-host today, Mr. Steve Carlin. Steve, happy Lent. Hey, happy Lent, Sean. That's, I think, the kindest introduction I've gotten from you in about three and a half months on this show. (laughs) I am not fasting from you because Lent, as we know, is a time of penance. It's a time to go out into the desert. It's a time of dryness, and it's a time to reform your soul. And I feel like you helped me do all of those things, and so we're... We're in this together. We're in it together. I'm ready for Lent this year. Normally, at this time of year, here in Wisconsin, it's like seven degrees below zero. And we've had this unseasonably warm 20 degrees over the average Mm. uh, temperature. So so I don't like normally we hit this point. I'm like, haven't we had Lent for the last six weeks, eight weeks? But no, we've had actually a good winter. I'm ready for it. I've got my camo on today to do spiritual combat uh, with, with myself and with evil. And it's go time. Yeah, I we're we're a tale of two cities. Uh, for the audience, Steve didn't know I was going to be dressed like this. I did. I wasn't expecting to be dressed like this, but I had a a meeting pop up, an important meeting that I have to go to, and of course, uh, with an individual who will remain nameless. 
and we i didn't we couldn't move the recording of this podcast because lent is quickly approaching and so um i'm not trying to be like the formal podcast guy but we're kind of telling two two stories right like you're you're the uh your spiritual battle guy with the camo peacefully and prayerfully fighting off the devil um and i'm kind of dressed up i'm like the the guy that's you know like fasting but he's got the oil on and we're sort of representing you're washing both. your face yeah both angles of of lent both angles of fasting so that's that's kind of how i wonder if i could rend this without ripping the 40 days for life <laughs> logo here i think if you rend your garment that's that's the end of the garment actually yeah um so yeah that that would that would really be bad um this is one of those weird years where saint valentine's feast day the great martyr his feast day falls on ash wednesday um which is for most of the population not the most romantic day in the world ash wednesday a day of fasting and penance and the kicking off lent um so I'm sure people, we celebrated uh, Val Valentine's Day last week uh, with our kids. I'm sure people are doing a lot of that uh, for Mardi Gras. But Steve, I would like to teach the audience something since they have to listen to us babble on about things that don't really matter. This Oh, is they useful. love it. They'd love it deep down. But... <laughs> <laughs> Saint, because there's there's... Lent starting kind of puts me in a good mood because the Irish Catholic, like, I love it, right? It's like penance, it's dark. Um, and it's also, we're getting closer to St. Patrick's Day. So St. Valentine's Day represents, it's like a foreshadowing. It's like the John the Baptist to St. Patrick's Day. Did you know St. Valentine is buried in Ireland and he, he, you can go see him? I did not know that. Yes, I've seen pictures of the relics because there's a nice contrast where it's like you can't spell Valentine without Lent. And then they show like his his skeleton and everything, which like I don't think we have that as much in the U.S. I've never seen a skeleton, but I've seen a lot of skeletons in Europe. There was an Irish priest who in like 1836 went to Rome. He was a very gifted preacher and he went to Rome, which, of course, was a huge deal. Uh, it's a huge deal now. We just got back. But um Back then, it was an even bigger deal, you know, because um, you're going by horse. So he went to Rome, boat in the case of the Irish, and he preached and all these people came out, all these academics and all these, you know, people high up in the church. And they listened to him and they were just blown away. He was such a good orator. And the Pope came to listen to him. It was Gregory the 15th or 16th. I can't remember. And... um he was so impressed, he gave him the relics of St. Valentine, and that's why they were brought back to Ireland. Oh, awesome. It's just a good speaker. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's pretty that's cool. Pretty, that's pretty, yeah, pretty pretty legit. Um, so, Steve, we're going to send you to Rome. You, you go around, you start preaching. Who knows what you'll come back with. Yeah, that's a that is a good thing. You know, actually, Sean, this is funny. Somebody read my book, the not the book that we did together, but my book. This is when we begin to fight, and they they were moved by something in particular that I wrote. I won't get into that, but they actually sent me the relics of four saints. Obviously, we're not talking skulls or like the major relics, but they sent me four relics of four passionate saints. So it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's true. It's already happened. It's already happened to you. <laughs> so there you go. If you want to see. Uh, St. Val, it's in like Friar Street Church, like White Friar Street Church in Dublin. Um, highly recommend it. Beautiful church. Um, like many of the churches in Ireland, you can go see St. Valentine's. So, okay, transitioning out of that. Um, another saint, which now every Christian kind of uses this, other saints have ripped it off, but the one who really created it is St. Benedict when going into Lent uh, or talking about I am not as I ought to be and I need to reset. I need to reform my life. I need to get out the garbage. Uh, and we all know what that is for our own souls. Um, I don't need to focus on the garbage in other people's souls. I need to get out the garbage in my soul and I need to replace that 
with the good, with virtue, with prayer, with fasting, with reading the scriptures. Um, this is a good version of the Great Reset. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not what I was thinking, but yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. This is. Uh, I'm, I'm here to help. Like, when you wear the hoodie, you just start stuff starts coming out of your brain. Um, yeah. It's in the so jeans. Saint Saint, Saint Benedict says, uh, where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? And talk about three sentences that our world desperately needs. We all need them in Lent this day, Ash Wednesday. We're supposed to reflect upon that and, and cut out all the, the self-delusion and think about where we came from eternally and on earth, our own family, our upbringing, where we're from, you know, reflect upon our whole lives. Um, why am I here and where am I going? Um, <clears throat> I went on a great retreat, it's a year and a half ago, and there was a reflection on imagining yourself 12 months from today. And sorry, is the opposite. It was imagining yourself 12 months ago. So you picture like basically your year in review on retreat. And if you could get in a time machine and you go back and you talk to Sean a year ago or Steve a year ago, what would you say to him? So what are the what are the what are the good things that he will encounter, the bad things, what are the pitfalls, what are the temptations, what are whatever it is? is a great reflection. It was a priest who, who did it, did a great job. Um, but I think Lent is a perfect way to do that. If we could go back to Ash Wednesday or Mardi Gras of a year ago and just sort of go through the year, it's hard to think about all, all the way back to when you're a child. That's healthy too. But just quickly, you can kind of do a year in review. What would we say to ourselves? What would we change? What would we reform? And then use that uh, to carry ourselves through Lent. So a shout out to St. Benedict for, for this easy way to approach Lent. Because some people are like, I, I, I uh, 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 went to my just regular doctor appointment uh, this morning. And my doctor was like, uh, we're I, I mentioned like Lent coming. She's like, oh my gosh, Ash Wednesday is next Wednesday. Oh, that got here fast. You know, I think a lot of people are like that, Steve. And, and it's a good way to just kind of have some focus going in. It is a good way. And I think Lent in many ways is about focus because our world is so filled with distraction. There are so many things competing with our attention, the attention we should be paying to the Lord. So many things uh, competing for our love, for our focus, all of those sorts of things. And so this is a time where we talk about fasting. Like, what does it have to do? I, I, we've said it a hundred times on this podcast. What does not eating have to do with growing closer to God? Well, it's when we're comfortable, we tend to wander. Our mind wanders, our thoughts wander, our heart wanders. And when we go through a time of deprivation, self-imposed or otherwise, it is a constant reminder to us that we need the Lord and that he, frankly, even if we didn't need him, he deserves our our pride of place. Yeah, and here, here's what's, I think, the world's nuts, right? But here's what's great about Lent now is this whole fasting thing is this health fad. I mean, phenomenon with the intermittent fasting with people doing 24 hour fasts or 48 hour fasts or, you know, and all these doctors are like, it's one of the healthiest things you can ever do. And then all the self-help gurus are saying it's one of the healthiest things that you can ever do. Um, and it's so important. Fulton Shane has a great phrase where he says, if Christians put something down, the world will pick it up. Um, I don't know if it's fair to put fasting in that category, but I think we need to emphasize it more because even the world is recognizing the benefits of it. Um, but if you go, this is interesting. If you go to like some fasting website that's secular, they will say, they'll always start off with this. I always get a kick out of it. They're like, fasting is a a uh, historical ancient practice done for many spiritual reasons, but it has great health benefits also. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, yeah, spiritually it's helpful, but who cares about that? Your glucose will go down, you know? <laughs> so I always kind of get a kick out of those articles. Um, but 
I think that we should, you know, everybody's trying to always exile religion. There's a hatred of religion right now in the United States. We see it with all the insanity towards the Jews. We see it with the DOJ targeting, targeting Catholics. We see it with the that atheist, you know, or the devil, the demon monument in, in Iowa. Um, and yet, you know, sometimes the world will knock on our door and say, oh, this fasting thing makes sense. Um so five good ways to fast. And we're going to, Steve, start with just the obvious. The basics, food. You can give up food for an extended period of time. That may be something different for everybody, depending on their age or their health or their state of life or whatnot. But we give it up for longer than we would like to go uh, without eating here. Or there's other ways to do it. You can give up certain types of food. Many people give up sweets. Many people give up snacking. Many people give up sweetened beverages or beverages with alcohol in them. There's a lot of different ways. But food is sort of that primary drive, the bodily drive that human beings have. And when we can sort of tame that, subject it, that is a really good first step to withdrawing from comfort and drawing near to the Lord. It is. And it's, it's uh, to me, um, if you want to look, I, I know we're going to put the, the links to previous uh, fasting podcasts, but we give specific examples of different types of food, what people have done, and they've given us feedback. It's not us telling you what to do, obviously, uh, but it's, it's a lot of the feedback. People have gotten really creative, but I think as we get older, this becomes easier and simpler because we know I don't need this. I don't need that. What's a real sacrifice? What's not? Um, what we can realistically stick to. Um, I think that's very important. And if we if we can't, you know, um, then making a plan for that. You know, some people are like, I'm going to give up sweets. And then, I don't know, it's like their 25th wedding anniversary or something during Lent. And it's like, you're probably going to have a piece of cake with your wife and that's not the end of the world, you know, just plan on it and do it and enjoy it. Um, so I, I think everybody knows themselves uh, better. I know in high school, I was kind of crazy Lent guy and, um, you know, running around, I'm going to give up everything. Um, you're sprinkling ashes on your head at geometry <laughs> class. <laughs> I was eating the ashes. That's right. I was it was lemon water. Um, you're but sort of yeah. uh, you don't take communion on the tongue. You take your ashes on your tongue. That's right. Rub it in there. It's uh, it is. It's it, it is a uh, and we're obviously doing the five best things to give up before the five things not <laughs> to give up. So we won't skip ahead. But it is. It's very, very important, I think, to give up some kind of physical food, alcohol. This applies to everything but coffee. We'll get into that. Um whether you have the capacity to give up coffee without killing everyone around you or them wanting to kill you. Um, but I think that this is a, this is an easy one food. Okay. Number two, very important in our age. This has become very popular. Uh, entertainment. Entertainment. That could be uh, TV, social media, the idle time wasted on smartphones, Sports, that'd be a hard one for me and you, Sean. Fortunately, the, the best sports uh, of, of our country are, are not taking place at this you know, time. Yeah, so the it's a Super little bit Bowl easier. is over. The Super Bowl is <laughs> over. I'm, actually, I'm going to add that to my list because <laughs> I won't watch any sports. <laughs> you can fast from music. You know, I love when as I'm working, unless I like need like absolute focus on something, I love to have some music on in the background. These are all things that, that can also serve as distractions, though. And I think it's very helpful because I notice, um, you know, I, I quit Facebook a number a, a while back. I don't remember when it was, but you, I kind of found I had like my brain was like, oh, I could post this or I wonder when I'm going to check that. Like we all have sort of these routines that we snap into with, you know, moving images or screens or music or whatever that all just sort of is the background of our lives. And when um, I guess when um when we're without that, it forces us to do a little bit of a reckoning. I'm trying to think of here. There's, I can't remember if it was one of the saints or, or who it was that said like the, the issue with man is that he is completely unable to spend 10 minutes alone in silence. And Lent is an opportunity for us to, to do that for long stretches for 40 days. Yes. And uh, somebody who's not a saint, but of course, in my opinion, should be Walker Piercy has a, a great quote about that of how, since since say and he died in 1991 so modern um but we're so sensational he had a great quote about travel the most overrated thing in the world is travel 
um, because we do all these awesome things. We watch the Super Bowl and we have a party and, and, you know, we're constantly sort of searching for the next event or the next high, but we can't get through a Wednesday afternoon and know that we are loved or why we exist um, as a whole. And so that's kind of when we lose our minds is when we're still and alone. And I think that really applies. And giving up entertainment is a great way to just unplug and turn off the noise. A lot of people will do, uh, and this is, I think, a great resolution, only work internet. So, which sometimes can be hard if you're like going on a, you know, trip or something with your family or you know whatever for spring break or something and you have to like book a hotel but but people know like you said you know what you should cut out and i think i'm only going to be on the internet for work that's going to save you a lot of time and that's definitely a habit that will stick um after after easter it's really important because i think I think we can get a good idea of the types of things that maybe the Lord is calling us to fast from by the things that we get kind of itchy about. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, if you start kind of getting jittery and you start just like robotically, mechanically reaching for your phone, going for a snack, those types of things are the things that we could probably do without for a little while. Absolutely. Okay, this next one is um, comforts which is a great category non-food comforts we have some great examples we've shared it before we've had uh kids and adults uh give up their pillow for lent um just go without it you get used to it um i just like anything else <laughs> this, is, this is we love us some cold showers taking a cold shower okay um uh, this is a good one, especially for Steve, because this is come out as icicles. But we've done this with our kids, like on like, I think we're doing it again. We have these family resolutions and then personal ones, but like Tuesday and Friday during Lent. It's not every day. The kids will kill us. But I am sh I'm I always laugh. They they stick to it. And it's funny. My nine year old. I mean, the little, little kids don't do it. But my nine-year-old boy loves it. Like, Declan loves it. He asks, like, at Christmas, are we going to do cold showers for Lent? Um, it's just, it's it's great. It's seen as a positive, right? Um, and it it is, it is the, the thing I like about cold showers for any kind of thing. You could obviously do this any time of year. But it, Steve, you can get used to, like, not having Coke, <laughs> And you can get used to not having beer and you can get used to maybe giving up sweets. You know, I don't have a sweet tooth, so maybe that's easier for me to say. It is easier for me to say. But the cold shower every time is awful. <laughs> yeah, it's like the penitential equivalent of your slap your mama uh, rub that you put on stuff. You feel like you and someone just slapped your mama when you get out of that cold shower. And you know what, Sean? I'll tell you, I'm not like a super faithful cold shower guy, but the stretches of my life where I've done that for one reason or another, you never have an unproductive day after that. It's kind of like, all right, uh -uh. blood's flowing now. Let's do this. No, and it's it's funny. I've heard Navy SEALs talk about the power of water because when you go through buds and you do hell week, I mean, basically they want you wet and sandy all the time. And people who have never been there don't realize that the Pacific Ocean is freezing. Um, even as far south as San Diego, it's absolutely like chilling. And um they'll the seals will kind of make fun of people that try to get used to it. Like they'll like go and do polar bear swims like to, to get ready to enter the to try out for the seals, or they'll take cold showers and they're like, Don't do that. Take hot showers. <laughs> like it's it's you won't get used to it. It will be awful, and you might as well just like, you know, <laughs> take cold, hot showers while you can. Um but you are right about the productivity. And the thing is, you're not just like, I'm taking a cold shower because it's Lent or it's 40 days for life. And I'm just going to kind of, you know, have a have a prayer intention. You know, the thing that makes a cold shower easy is not that it gets warm, but or that you get used to it. Number one, you will shower quicker. I'll tell you that. Number two, um, think about somebody who's suffering. You know, so we all know someone uh, pray for that person during the cold shower, uh, pray for uh, the unborn, pray for an end to abortion. 
And it's, it's very, very powerful. It gets the focus off of yourself and, and, you know, your, your, our sort of temporal suffering voluntarily, right? We all have things that we just suffer from as part of life, but you're, you're volunteering your suffering, um, for the crucified Christ and, and for somebody else who's, who's suffering and, and, you know, you can be in solidarity, uh, with them. I think that's one of the beautiful things about 40 days for life is where they were out physically outside the abortion facilities in solidarity with the babies as they're being killed. And certainly we're in solidarity with the women, you know, when they come out, they think we're just there to judge them and we're, we're there to help them even afterwards. So I think the cold shower helps us with our, our solidarity and, uh, it, Steve, we should say officially it is okay to scream like a seven-year-old girl when the water hits you, even if you're like a 40-year-old dude. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you said that, Sean. I was afraid that was just me, but it's... it's. But, I mean, I've never yeah. done it. I've just yeah, heard yeah, yeah, yeah. some people some people have. Yeah, that some people may be on this podcast, maybe not. You're not pointing any fingers. I understand how it is. <laughs> but... <laughs> Go I think ahead. it's it's particularly good as we head into, you know, Holy Week. We're still a long ways away from Holy Week at this point, but that's the destination. And the Holy Week marks the passion of our Lord. And so I think, you know, we can do things like meditate upon that. I, I've sometimes wanted to give myself a big old kick in the backside, be like, you're screaming about this cold water like the Lord had nails put through him and scourging and all those sorts of things. I try to, you know, when, when that water hits your back, it's freezing. And yet... um you know, what do we read in scripture? He gave his back to those who beat him. And I think those are those little things we can reflect on to kind of help us manage if we if we particularly choose this penance. Yeah. Okay, so the comforts, pillow, cold showers, and thermostat. This is bold, and you put this on here. And it's <laughs> you're frozen half the year. Turn down the temp a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, simple, but it's uh, it's it's like taking a cold shower, but all day long. <laughs> and you save money on heating. There's a little twist to it, you know, yeah. kind of a little worldly bonus. I'm going to add another one on here. Uh, the comforts of our own opinion. Ooh. Yeah, there we Elaborate. go. I'm excited. I, like, I don't know where exactly you're going with this, but I want to hear. Everyone likes to give their own opinion. It makes us comfortable. It makes us fit in. It makes us feel like other people need to hear it <laughs> there's a huge assumption when we give our opinion and we all do it all the time i do for sure you can ask my children and just looking for do i need to say this at this moment am i going to be <laughs> helpful and the power of silence which is a great book but the power of silence when we just don't say something it doesn't mean you're like a mute right the whole length but Really putting up another little, I don't want to say TSA agent because I don't know how effective they are, but putting up another guard of your thoughts and opinions. And, I, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody with kids, which is a lot of people in our audience, whether your kids are grown, but when they were small, this is like a constant thing, right? Of like, hey, you don't actually have to be talking right now or you don't you need to think about that question before you ask it. One thing we know, raising children, there are, in fact, uh, stupid questions and a lot of them, you know, where, where kids know the answer. Um, the biggest being, where's mom? Which has been a phrase that is banned from our home. Where's mom? I just make up places. I just, I just say like, I don't know, Wexford, Ireland. I just, you know, <laughs> so um, Dubu Dubuque, Iowa. I do that one a lot. Uh, so not having to give our opinion or at least giving us a, a screen of, of course, I could talk right now. I think I have something to offer. Do I really have something to offer? Was I asked to offer it? Um, I think the best example of this that we all do is somebody telling us something they did. But they may, uh, uh, okay, we'll just, let's say, Steve, you say you like to make Italian food. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, for Valentine's Day, I made Laura this homemade ravioli and I did this and I put olive oil in it. Oh, well, you're explaining it to me. And I'm like, oh, have you ever had the ravioli in Rome? I was in Rome and it's phenomenal. You've been to Italy a bunch. But like, you know, it, you just start relating to 
you st- you you snatch it and make it about yourself. Self-referential. That. That's the word my wife uses to describe that. So you're being a little self-referential right now. <laughs> yes. Yes. And so it, it's all of a sudden now we're talking about me. And uh, so this one definitely applies to me. I think the president could go for that one. I don't want to tell him how to order a spiritual life, but yeah, he does that with race. He does that. He does that with a lot of issues, but I don't know if he has the capacity to even do that anymore. Um, okay. So that's it. Comforts, pillow, cold shower, thermostat opinion. Number four, great thing for Lent. It's something we all need. I think people look forward to this. Order your life. Yeah, this is a little bit different because it's a little bit outside the category of fasting. But I think we all, whatever our state in life is, there are things that derail us, right? And so we want to get up at a good time and something happens, so we don't. We want to go to bed at a good time and something happens, so we don't. We want to get started early on work and something happens, so we don't. All these happen. We want to make it a mass on time or church on time and we don't. All these things where we're kind of just without direction, things get amiss. I think that is... You know, it maybe isn't sinful or at least always sinful, but it's not good. I think we all benefit spiritually and I think we benefit practically. And I think everything benefits when we try to kind of stay on track and be disciplined in our regimen for the day. That doesn't mean things aren't going to come up, but it means we don't we don't let that become the norm. We make sure it's the exception. And I think Lent is that time where it's like a New Year's resolution except for real and with real purpose and with real motivation to do it. I know there's a variety of things, just random things, oftentimes little things in my life where I find myself, you know, did I read any books this month? No, because I was like reading something on Twitter. Those are the the opportunities that we can take to just kind of cut out the nonsense and put first things first. It's a great example too, what you just said with the book, because so many people... They have books. Uh, we all do. It's like books, but then you just waste time. And that's why giving up the entertainment uh, or uh, setting an alarm, setting a timer. I'm reading for 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's it. You put your phone on airplane mode and just do a timer. I mean, and you're always you have, it's always more satisfying, always more satisfying. Always uh, light a candle. That just changed the atmosphere, right? Calm down your wherever you are. Um, with silence, with a candle, with, you know, um, I, I think some, maybe like, I don't know, Gregorian chant in the background or some soft instrumental in the background. But if you need music, you can do that. Uh, just know Kenny Chesney. Um, but I think that's really good because the time you get up later or you don't go to bed on time. And of course this is hard. Um, but knowing what it, whatever it is getting to work on time getting to the vigil on time uh exercising your you know keeping your gap open for your daily prayers you know the window can close quickly the window can close quickly on those things the time window and i think you know just kind of warning ourselves um always giving yourself plenty of time for a task that you you know you should give each task too much time because we just know what happens something happens or you got to check your email or whatever and you know you list 11 things you have to get done today and you only get six done uh because you just didn't leave enough time so it's important okay. too sean because i one last thought on this is it's easy for us to like get derailed by stuff like oh well this happened and i didn't pray today but i will tomorrow like i think we've all had that experience but Sean, on Sunday, I don't think either of us were like, oh, man, some things just got busy and I, I didn't I forgot to watch the Super Bowl. You know, we make time for the things and, and we order our lives around the things that we put first. And that's why I think this this great reset, as I phrase it, is a good thing for us in more ways than one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we do that with 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 money. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we went out to eat or we were going to go out to eat or whatever, or, you know, but we always pay our electricity bill. We always pay the gas bill. Like, you know, we're capable of that. And then everything else is like this can be in this category that, that gets loosey goosey. And um that's can be part of the the ordering your life. And and I, the theme of why this is good and basically gave birth to monasticism is that our Lord lived simply. He lived simply. And we don't in the modern age. We are extremely busy. 
but we we do have the gadgets and we do have the technology to slow our life down. That's what all these iPhones and washing machines and dishwashers are supposed to do is to give us more time. Uh, but somehow we have less time than, uh, you know, people had 500 years ago. And so but we can use them uh, to simplify our life, to slow down our life, to decommit from things that we spend our time on, to decommit from certain you know activities of course not 40 days for life but to to really um slow down in a healthy way because when we slow when we slow our life down it speeds our soul up and our soul is free to run faster it's more time for prayer it's more time for reading it's more time for meditation it's more time um to to spend with your family uh, when you slow your life down. It's not laziness. It's not laziness. It's decluttering. It's decluttering. And so uh, I, I think that's a great thing. And it's a good time. It's like spring cleaning. Okay. The last one, five good ways to fast, is to redirect the things that you gave up. It's like when we do our matching challenge fundraisers, right? Like you can double your impact. This is a way to double your impact here because some of the things you give up, whether it's food, whether it's turning down the temperature on the thermostat, whether you're saving water because you're taking those 90 second quick cold showers, <laughs> save, save some money and you can redirect it for the spiritual and physical benefit of others. S support your local pregnancy center with it. Or um, same thing with time. We we save time. We declutter, as you just said, Sean. I think that was a great word choice. Uh, suddenly you have more time for prayer. You've got more time to go out to the 40 Days for Life vigil, more time to serve others, more time to dedicate toward your family. All of those are good things that benefit us spiritually, but also have a lot of practical benefits and spiritual benefits for those with whom our lives intersect. But with that, as we close out on the five bad things or the five good things to fast from, once when we do this, we're it, it happens every year. So I think everybody who takes Lent somewhat seriously, it's great, like a week or 10 days. And you're like, I'm good. And the devil will allow success because we're we're so self-absorbed and self-delusional and we're always going to go towards like serving ourselves. He'll give us these great spiritual victories or, you know, God will and he'll kind of leave us alone and uh, and then he'll start tempting us. So I think it's always good to know when is the halfway part of Lent? You know, when is when are we two weeks in just because that's when. Um, if you break your resolution, not the end of the world, you just start over. But the people that just say, ah, I'm done, done, it's over. And we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. No. Okay. The five bad things to fast from. The fun part, the part we've all Woo! been waiting for. We all know these people, and I have been this guy, a couple of these. All right. Giving up things that you shouldn't be doing anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fasting from getting drunk on Saturday night. I'm fasting from getting hammered every night. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, swearing, complaining, um, you know that. So we fast from things we don't like. I, I guess we should say for the record, all sin. You know, um, it's not the so fast; it's the prerequisites. Fast, like we fast from good things. You don't fast from bad things. Like Easter Sunday, let it rip, baby. Let it rip. Okay. All right. So that's number one. Just giving up things you shouldn't be doing anyways. It's kind of a given. Uh, number two. Spending your Lent miserable. And Steve, this is like anger. This is like coffee thing because... I saw a wonderful clip of Mother Angelica, who's the founder of EWTN, and this lady called in and said, oh, Mother, I gave up coffee, and it's just really hard. And and she's like, why'd you give up coffee? That's a stupid thing to give up. I love coffee. <laughs> and she's like, well, I have it every day. And she's like, are you barking at your husband? And she's like, yeah, it's really causing problems. <laughs> she's like, go drink coffee. Give something else up. But 
Steve, you're as, the only person in the world that doesn't like coffee, so you can't yeah, relate to that. Yeah, as a non-coffee drinker, this is beyond my ability. But I will take your advice from the first half of the podcast, and I will refrain from offering my opinion. I'll get pre- oh, I'll get started you. on Lent by offering my opinion on that. Yes, don't insult my anti-giving up coffee uh, sentiment. Some people can <laughs> just do it. I've actually never tried it. Maybe I should just do it, and I'll probably be fine. Probably all in my head. But once I saw that Mother Angelic clip, I was like, that's hysterical. Um Complaining, <laughs> you put this on here. Counting let down until it's over. <laughs> That's my uh, bread and butter right there. I think on one of these previous podcasts, you were like, I forget what it was. You were going to give up meat or something. And so you told Laura, like on Ash Wednesday, you know what we're doing on Easter is buying a smoker. I made it about so I had gotten through that first two weeks, like you said. We're about halfway through Lent, and I was like, "When this thing's over, we're getting a smoker." And Did so you really I ordered, you gave up all meat. I didn't give up all meat, but you know, we we did a, a some you kind had of a fast. System. Okay, okay, we had a it. system. Yeah, yeah. And we got through halfway. I'm like, "When this thing's over, we're getting a smoker." And so I scheduled the delivery to arrive the Monday after Easter, and then I'd be like, "Hit the ground running, baby." And instead, the smoker arrived at my doorstep. It was sitting there waiting for me as I arrived home from the liturgy on Good Friday, just taunting oh, yeah. me. And my Beautiful. wife was delighted about this because I was in agony about it. And uh, she said, no, you sit there. She said, don't even don't take it out of the box. You're just going to sit mm. there and you're going to look at your smoker. It's like when you've got the toddler, like, think about what you've done. You're just going to go to timeout yeah. and think about you. I went to timeout with my smoker. Yeah, that would have been tough not to take it out of the box. It was it was a complete failure of the ascetic life in every sense. <laughs> and you're like, I mean, it's Good Friday, which is like the highlight, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like the like the, our Lord dying on the cross. It's a day of fasting, and you're sitting here going, I don't know, you know midnight. Um, okay, I'm gonna add something onto this. You said something that, okay, so. Uh, counting down till it's over. Um, and then just being, you know, joyful uh, overall and knowing that obviously God is the source of our joy. We don't have to have chocolate to be happy. Um, it, it, chocolate and alcohol and pumpkin pie should make us happier. Can't be dependent on those things for be happy. They, we all know they won't make us happy. And we all know the dangers of thinking or convincing ourselves that they can. Um, I would add on to this part, spending your Lent miserable. Don't tell people what you gave up every second of the day. Uh, That is just, it's hard. Don't be rude. Um, I don't, we've encountered, I've encountered this so many times, Steve, I know you have where it's just like, well, we just gave up so many things for Lent. We, you know, we gave up this, we gave up that, we gave up that. And, And or you get somebody socially awkward at like a party and you could just say, I'm off that for Lent and move on. But like, you know, it's easy to say no, I guess, during Lent. Um, But don't make what you gave up the dominant force in the conversation of the room. Yeah, I think that's a good point. We've all had, I think, those awkward moments where someone's just like, nope, can't do that because it's Lent. Okay, no problem. But, you know, because we're fasting from, and the conversation, as you said, it doesn't need to go on other than a quick exchange. But as we talk about spending Lent miserable, I think there's something something that you said made me contemplate this idea of not complaining in, in a new way. When you were talking about fasting from the comfort of our own opinions, I think we can also fast from the comfort of complaining. And Sean, you don't complain. I've never seen you complain, really. I remember one of my first trips with you with 40 Days for Life. We were stranded in an airport and you're like, I'm going to go talk to the desk and see what's going on here. And you came back with a big smile on your face and I thought, great, the plane's going to take off. We're going to go. And then you said, no, they canceled the flight. We're going to be here overnight stuck in the airport. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Sean, Sean, I don't do that though. Like, so there's this we all have people in our lives and I am one of those people. If I'm in your life where something goes wrong, you're like, yeah, you know, the, the pipe broke and there's water everywhere. Like you can share what happened, but there's a a certain degree of, I think virtue that you can build up by simply just not talking about things that are bad in your life. 
Well, we're going to have our wonderful editor, Jill, cut that clip of, of you saying, Sean, you just never complain. And I'm going <laughs> to have that. That's going to be like Mary Lisa's alarm clock when she wakes up in the morning. She says, honey, <laughs> I never complained. Steve Carlin said it on our podcast. Um, but no, it's a, it's a great point that you make um, about just it's whatever our thing is. We look, all of us drive somebody nuts. OK, and we have other people that drive us nuts. But we're we get on someone's nerves, okay? And now that doesn't mean we run around and try to please everybody. Uh, those are the most obnoxious people in the world. But we all know that for good reason, we get on somebody's nerves for whatever it is. And this is just a great time to to kind of think about that. I think complaining or um, talking about ourselves or valuing our opinion on something that we really don't know what we're talking about. Um, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to be aware of. Uh, okay. Number three, don't do this. Substitute other things other than our relationship with God for the things from which we're fasting. This is a good one. This is like, um, we had an example in a previous podcast um, you give up soda so you have cake every night. Yeah. It's not the point. Our uh, local gas station has a generic brand of Doritos that has like the Cool Ranch mm. ones, like three times the little seasonings, those red and green things. I'm sure they're organic. And uh, <laughs> it'd be are, really tempting. I don't know like, what I, those are, but they're amazing. <laughs> no, no cookies. I'll have these generic Cool Ranch Doritos that are three times a seasoned uh yeah and, and people get legalistic about this stuff you know but i gave a brownies and this is a cookie and you're like yeah, this is not the point the point <laughs> is to go the point's to create a void in ourselves that cannot that th is filled with god yeah and it's not to starve ourselves it's not to be a lunatic uh but it's to create a void and we we really know what that can be we know what hurts and and there's a there's a balance of somewhere of what hurts and what is unrealistic um i think it's fine to shoot for unrealistic like i don't know if i can make it but go for it go for it you know you want to give up all meat you want to give up uh whatever it is you're going to get up at four o'clock in the morning every day until easter go for it you know if i change your life in a lot of ways but for all of us, there's something that we can or a couple of things we can remove and then and then refill. But but uh, but yeah, um, technically white chocolate isn't chocolate. Yeah. And then it's just annoying. It, it's just not the point. It is truly spiritual um, and it's not a diet. I've had people tell me they're like, yeah, I gave up carbs for Lent. Which is great, but that's a diet. I mean, that's keto. Which keto is awesome. Keto's helped a lot of people. Um, but that's keto. I mean, you can do keto during Lent, I guess. Um, but anyways, that's a diet. And it's gotta, it's gotta have, you know. I mean, if you yeah, it's just the spirit of it, you know. You can have a 12 ounce bone in filet mignon with Gulf shrimp and green beans. No carbs, baby. And a whiskey, and you're on keto, and it's <laughs> not a carb in there. You know? so, <laughs> anyways, we hope everybody's getting the point. Okay, we're talking to ourselves too. This is the this is we're we're not the, we're not pontificating, uh, even though that word gets a bad rap. Yeah, a lot okay. of these don't do this are born of experience. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, we kind of touched on this, but this is this is this is. I'm not revealing what I'm doing for Lent, Steve, but Mary Lee's is already on me. She's Ooh. like, I will be monitoring you because of this reason. You make others share your sacrifice. Ah. So I think she's a little skeptical of whether I can pull off what I'm trying to do. But but yeah, uh, that's that's very important because crazy Lent guy who's so angry because he's fasting. And so he's screaming at his kids or he's, you know, whatever it may not be fasting. It may be, it could be coffee. 
Um, it could be, I don't, I don't know what it is, whatever it is. But if you're irritable, that's not the goal. Yeah, I know we've had times in our household where, like, let's say I'm fasting from ice cream, for example, and, like, the kids are going to have ice cream, and and Laura, Laura sometimes will, like, out of kindness, like, it's coming from a good place, like, no, no, guys, don't have that. Dad's not having ice cream for Lent. And, like, that, that me not having it has nothing to do with whether my kids can have it or my wife can have it or anybody else can have it. It, I, if, if I can't, like, sit there and watch someone eat ice cream without melting down, I'm kind of, I think, what, what's a phrase Robert uses? I've lost the plot. Yes, I've lost the plot, which is just wonderful phrase that I don't, I can never bring myself to say in a serious <laughs> conversation. But um, no, it's it's really great, and we can easily make make you know uh, make our thing just annoying on a human level. Um, but also, it's just like you have to relate to other people. This is, I mean, if you go on a Ford, if you go on a Lenten retreat, which I've met a few people who have done that. They're single, obviously. They just go on a 40-day retreat. You know, then it's you and, you know, you 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 got it. It's free reign. You know, it's an empty chalkboard, what you can do. You're not really going to have any human contact. Uh, but if you've got a function in your job and with your family and you've got a, you know, uh, I, I think when you have a lot of activities during Lent, it just makes things, you know, harder when you're really, really busy. It's one of the things we always talk about, Steve, with Advent, because Advent's just a busier time of the year in the secular world. Everybody's throwing parties. Christmas now starts, you know, on Halloween. And it just, you know, kind of seems like to never end. But but Lent's a little bit more forgiving. Of course, we have to celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. But, um, you know, besides that, it's pretty wide open. This okay. is a category too, where I think we, you mentioned this a little bit before, but we're reasonable. Like it's, it's not avoiding the piece of cake that gets, gets you spiritual growth. So if it's your daughter's birthday, I don't think there's really all that much virtuous about like, no, I'm not having cake. You can sit there and eat your cake alone or like, you're not having cake either. Like have one cake. This is not a, like a time where like, as a matter of fact, it's uh Sam's birthday. So I will have that third steak, but within reason we celebrate the things when we dance when we dance and we mourn when we mourn exactly okay the last thing and this ties into this do not do this because you can't uh during lent is to try to save yourself yeah it can become a challenge i think the diet mentality kind of creeps in here a little bit where we're not looking to god's grace we're not looking toward what the holy spirit is doing inside of us but we're going to earn our way there through our rigorous penances the the number of things that we fast from how hard we fast how intense it is and uh, that's not to say i mean and many of us should be doing perhaps uh intense penances or whatever like there's a place for that but it's with a full recognition that it's not what we're doing that is bringing the grace and we're just trying to make room for god to do it it's not something where we can you know if i fast from those doritos i was talking about but you fast from doritos and cookies that you have somehow earned more graces that's uh, again losing the plot it does this sadly i think has driven christians away from fasting um but it, it's the bad thing about fasting it's not the correct way to do it is that oh people they're just giving up meat or whatever because they they don't think the grace is sufficient or they're trying to save themselves and it it's that's total nonsense uh that can be an abuse of a good practice but that's not uh the point of fasting i mean from the beginning of certainly uh the old testament uh, the jews held fast um and Christ himself gives us that example of, of him fasting in the desert for 40 days. He tells us directly some demons can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. He doesn't add on after that. But you don't really have to do the fasting stuff. I mean, you know, I'm I'm good. Um, that That's not the case. We're called to fast, and it's to unite ourselves to Christ. Um, and, of course, any great... Christian practice or any practice for that matter can be abused, but it's a real shame when sometimes the abuse of that or the perceived abuse of that leads people not to do it. Um, I've met people that are like, I just couldn't, I don't think you should pray in silence. I think you should just pray out loud and then, and then move on. And, and, uh, you know, I'm sitting here going, well, you, 
I said, you should try it. I mean, you and silently read the Bible and just meditate upon it and be quiet. You know, it's hard to um, listen if you're always talking. <laughs> It is. And of course, prayer is one of those things like you got to do whatever, like there's a million different ways to do it. But but all these practices, whether it be uh, something we're comfortable with or uncomfortable with, I, I don't think we should write them off because we we perceive that somehow it's it's not authentic. That's a very dangerous mindset. But fasting is such a gift. And we have had so many people who have volunteered for 40 Days for Life. And have told us this was the first time I fasted. And it, it's not, it's it's everybody. I mean, we've had Catholics, we've had Protestants, we've had evangelicals um, say this, this was just the first time I actually took it seriously or did a fast. And part of it was the intention because it was, it gave them focus. It was pray for an end to abortion, fast for an end to abortion, you know, unite yourself with with uh the crucified christ as paul says so um it's a it's a beautiful thing we hope that this helps you uh we can do a quick review of things that you can the good and the bad the five good things to fast from food number one number two entertainment number three comforts number four um ordering your life putting your life in order number five redirecting the things that you gave up the bad things you should not fast from uh things you shouldn't be doing anyways number two spending your lent miserable number three substituting other things other than god for the things from which you're fasting uh, number four make others share in your sacrifice and your misery and number five you're trying to save yourself by all these great things you're doing so those are the good and the bad. We hope that you uh, enjoy uh, this Lent. We hope that it's very fruitful, that you grow closer uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you uh, grow closer to your family, to your, your spiritual life uh, improves, and that is the fuel that makes 40 Days for Life work, is the souls and the intentions and the dispositions of the souls that participate in 40 Days for Life. That is what makes it work, and it is beautiful, uh, this Lent. It is, as much as we joke, it is going to be cold in a lot of places, and the women will see that. The women will see that. That's one of the reasons we have more saves per capita um, per campaign in, in Lent, because it's cold, and they know it's cold, and yet you're still there. You're still there. And so um, they can see your love uh, through that sacrifice. So... If you have any good Lenten suggestions, please post them on the YouTube page. Uh, or if you have comments about anything that we said, good or bad, uh, please uh, post that as well. And be sure to rate, review, and share this podcast. Thank you, Steve Carlin. Uh, happy Lent to you. And we look forward to seeing everybody out on the sidewalk uh, tomorrow. Our team will be traveling a lot. Uh, I will leave very soon. And uh, be sure to keep our team in prayer. You're all... Uh, in our prayers and ultimately be sure to especially go to 40 daysforlifecom and find your location and sign up so have a blessed Lent and we will see you next time God bless you